we're on problem 124. And 124 says in town X, 64% uh, of the population are employed and 48% of the population are employed males. What percent of the employed people in town X are females? So we know that there's two groups of people. There are people who are employed and there are people who are not employed. And then there's males and females. So whenever you see two different sets like this, we know we have to set up a matrix. So let's do that right now. So we have males and we have females in total. We also have people who have jobs and people who aren't working and the total number of people. So we set up this matrix like so. And uh, just as, as kind of a, a recap, remember that uh, you're going to take whatever's in this box and this box and add it together and you'll, you'll get the answer here. And uh, when you add these two boxes, it's, uh, the answer is going to go here. So it looks like this. Okay, going back to the question, it says 64% of the population are employed. So in terms of employment and total people employed, there is going to be 64. And we know the total uh, population is 100%, right? So 64% um, of uh, people are employed. And how many people are unemployed? That's going to be 36. Okay, so far so good. They also tell us that 48% of the population are employed males. So 48% of the total population are employed males. Okay, so what percent of the employed people in town X are females? Let's do some subtraction to find out what percent of everybody uh, is a female. And uh, what you get here is 16. So there are 16% of females in the entire town uh, who are also employed. Here's where it gets tricky. Now you'll see the answer choice A says 16%, but if you picked this answer, you would be wrong. You have to read the question carefully. It says what percent of the employed people in Town X are females, not what percent of the entire town. So they're saying what percent of this. So let's set up a ratio. 16 over 64 is the same as 1 over 100. Uh, do the, the multiplication and you'll get 64 and 1600. And if you solve for this, it's going to get you X. So 2 and... Uh, And that's going to be, oh, oops, yeah, 20, 32. So the answer is actually going to be 25, and that is answer choice B. Number 125 says if P over Q is less than 1, and P and Q are both positive, which of the following must be greater than 1? So, which one's got to be greater than 1? Uh, let's figure out how we would solve this. Oh, you know what? Let me, let me list out the answer choices here first. So, A is going to be the square root of P over Q. B is going to be P over Q squared. C is going to be P over 2Q, D is Q over P squared, and E is Q over P. Now remember that both of these are positive and, and, uh, and we are looking for something that is going to be greater than 1. So the answer choice has to be greater than 1. Best way to figure this out is uh, to just make up some numbers. So we know that p over q is going to be less than one. So what if p were? What if p was one? And what if q was two? Yeah, a half is definitely less than one, right? So let's pretend that p is one and q is two, and plug them into the answer choices and see what we get. So I'm going to use a different color. Okay. So p, uh, if p were one and q were two, then the square root of a half. And that's definitely smaller than one. So it's not a. We know it absolutely cannot be a. For b, p over q squared, that's going to be 1 over 4. It's smaller than 1, and that's not it. p over 2q, same thing, 1 over 4, that's not it. 
2 over p squared is going to be 2 over 1 squared. That is larger than 1, so maybe it's going to be d. e is q over p, which is 2 over 1. Hmm, so it could be either d or e. Now, when, it, when we're looking at situations like this, then we have to think, well, we got to try to use a different example. Let's plug in two different numbers and, and try out B and E and see which one actually fits. So now instead of 1 over 2, why don't we try, hmm, why don't we try 2 over 3? Because this is still less than 1, so this is still true. And let's plug that back into this equation and see what we get. So use a different color now. And uh, if we were to use 2 and 3, P squared, P squared would be 2 times 2, so that would be uh, 4 and q would be 3. So that would be 3 over 4, which is less than 1, and this would not be right. But it were, if it were q over p, we'd get 3 over 2, which is definitely greater than 1. So e is going to be the correct answer. Moving on to 126. 126 says it would take one machine four hours to complete a large production order. Ah, machines. Whenever you see the GMAT talk about machines, you know what you have to do. One over four. Four hours, one task, right? So first machine, four hours to complete this one task. Another machine takes three hours to complete that task. If they work together, uh, at their respective constant rates, how many hours would it take both machines? So you had to set it up as 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3 equals 1 over x. Then the rest of it is just as simple as solving for x. You have 3 plus 4, that's 7 over 12, that's over 1 over x. x is going to be 12 over 7. And uh, the answer is going to be 1 and... Uh, five sevenths. And that is C. Number 127 says to mail a package, so we got a package here, the rate is x cents for the first pound and uh, y cents for additional. And they tell us that x is larger than y. And then there are two packages. We have package one here, which is three pounds. We have another package here, which is five pounds. Let me draw a little bow on, on this little package. Yay. OK, three and five. Uh, they can be mailed either separately or combined as one giant package. Which method is cheaper and how much money is saved? Okay, so we have two different options. We can do them separate, or we can do them combined. Well, let's, let's figure this out. Uh, if we were to do them separately, then you would have package one and package two, and package one would cost uh, X cents for the first pound, and then two Y cents, right? Because you add up for, you know, there's three pounds total. And package... Uh, the five pound package would be x cents for the first pound and uh, the four y. Added together, it'd be two x plus six y. And that's how much it would cost to ship them separately. If you combine them, you're just going to get one eight pound package. And that's going to be x plus seven y. Because x for the first pound and seven uh, y cents for the additional pounds. And uh, that's what you're going to get as your combined value. Now, remember, they're asking for this question specifically, they're asking which one is going to be cheaper and how much money is actually saved. OK, so which one's going to be cheaper? Hmm, let's think here. X has got to be bigger than Y. Why don't we make up some numbers? So if X were, I don't know, let's say X were 2 cents and Y was 1 cent, well, let's just do two. Two and one. Two cents and one cent. Let's plug them in and see which one's going to end up bigger. So two and two is going to be four plus six equals ten. 
and uh, plug these in here and you get 2 plus 7 equals 9. So when you ship, them com uh, ship the package combined, you're only spending 9, but if you ship them separately, you're going to be spending 10. And they're asking which one's cheaper, so when you, the combined uh, package is definitely going to be cheaper. So that already eliminates uh, D and E. So we're going to eliminate D and E. Now A, B, and C are all saying that they're going to be combined. But in terms of savings, A says that the savings are going to be X minus Y cents. B is going to be Y minus X cents. And C is going to be just X cents. How many do they actually save? Well, they're going to save one, right? Well, what's one? One is going to be Y. But Y is not one of the answer choices. We know Y is one. Er, it's not going to be C because X is two. You're not saving two cents here, so it's not going to be C. Two minus one is one. So X minus Y is going to be one. X minus Y is A. And A is going to be your answer choice. It's not going to be a negative number, so that's why it's not B. So A is going to be the correct answer. On to 128. What does 128 say? 128 says, if money is in... Ah, this is a money investment problem. Okay, fun. If money is invested at R percent interest, so R percent interest, compounded annually, the amount of the investment will double in approximately 70 over R years equals it will double. Okay. If Pat's parents invested $5,000... In a long-term bond that pays 8% interest, which is, remember, that means 8 equals R. That's what that's telling you. And that's compounded annually. What will be the approximate total amount of the investment 18 years later? Remember, we know that 8 equals R. So let's figure out how many years it would take to double. 70 over 8 is going to be uh, kind of close to 9, right? Close to 9, because 9 times 8 is going to be 72. Um, so the question says approximate. So whenever you see approximate, you know we have to estimate. So let's just say it's 9. It's going to be take 9 years for this amount to double. Well, 18 years later, that means it's doubled twice, right? So what happens when we double 5,000 two times? Well, the first time you double it, you're going to get 10,000. You double it again, 20,000. And that happens to be one of the answer choices. That is answer choice A. And that's your answer. 129 says, In a recent trip, Cindy drove her car 290 miles, rounded to the nearest 10 miles, and used 12 gallons of gasoline, uh, rounded to the nearest gallon. The actual number of miles per gallon that Cindy's car got on this trip must have been between, and they give us some ranges. Well, if it was rounded then to the nearest uh, 10 miles and what we're looking at here is a range of 285 to 295 right because you can either round down or round up but here you know they're saying we're rounding to the nearest gallon so it could be either 11.5 all the way to 12.5 they're saying which uh, what is the actual number of miles per gallon when you see a problem like this, you're going to have to mix, minimize and maximize and match up the largest, the smallest, and the, the middle ones together. So what we're going to get is 295 over 11.5 uh, and 285 over 12.5. That is hopefully one of the answer choices. Is it A? No, it's not A. B, that isn't. Looks like the answer, yes, it is D. D tells you it's 285 over 12.5 and 295 over 11.5. So that is going to be your answer. All right, now check me out in the next video.